back to another episode of Nea and Pooj, The Primate Guy and Girl, a show for people of all ages who want to learn about different kinds of primates. Today we're going to be talking about the Sabuela pygmaea, commonly known as the pygmy marmoset. They are native to the rainforest of the Amazon basin, which extends all the way from Colombia to Brazil. Pygmy marmosets are unique for many reasons. They're the world's smallest species of monkey, and they also have a very interesting social dynamic known as cooperative breeding. They also have developed some pretty unique types of communication. Alright, what are we waiting for? Let's see how these animals actually live in the wild. Pygmy marmosets grow between 6 to 9 inches from head, head to tail end, and usually only weigh between 100 to 140 grams. That's about as much as, as an iPhone. Wow, that's pretty small. But this small size is pretty useful for them. It actually allows them a lot of agility in the arboreal environment that they live in. They can leap up to 15 feet between branches. At the same time, however, their small size means that these guys can't expend too much energy, which is why they have pretty small home ranges ranging from 0.1 to 0.4 hectares. The size of this home range is usually determined by the location of the pygmy marmoset's food source, which are gum and sap producing trees. The marmosets use their sharp claws to climb up to 20 meters high along these trees to extract the gum. They have specially adapted teeth and jaw muscles, which allow them to break through the tree bark. When you look at the trees, you can often see hundreds of circular marks of scar tissue from where the marmosets have been feeding. Feeding patterns for pygmy marmosets are strongly tied to the social dynamics of the species. In the cooperative breeding system, males take on a significant portion of their time raising the young in the group. Many scientists claim that female pygmy marmosets, in fact, select the males who demonstrate strong child rearing qualities. This makes it such that most of the time, male pygmy marmosets are carrying infants and licking out for predators, allowing female pygmy marmosets a greater feeding priority. Well, this is pretty important for pygmy marmosets, because females can give birth to twins up to twice a year, which means they need more time to feed and rest to compensate for all the energy they spend as mothers. These primates are also interesting because of their reproduction. In each group, there is always one dominant female who is always the one who breeds, while all the other young and adult pygmy marmosets assist in the care of the dominant female's infant. In these groups, which range from 2 to 10 marmosets, there is usually a dominant male as well, but his priority, along with every other male's, is ensuring to raise the infants and looking out for pred predators. The groups usually consist of the dominant female's infant offspring, her juvenile offspring, and some adult males and females who are oftentimes her own offspring. Pygmy marmosets generally leave this group that they were born in when they become subadults, because their group begins to push them out of feeding sites forcing them to move to other trees and try to join other groups and mate. Alright, now let's talk about conservation. Pygmy marmosets are listed by the IUCN as a species of least concern, which means they are not endangered. But, as always, humans definitely still have an effect on the ecology of these guys. For example, areas with more human disturbances cause pygmy marmosets to move upward in the forest. In fact, a lot of other industries like agriculture and Logging have forced pygmy marmosets out of 85% of the habitat that they live in. Also, because of how undeniably cute they are, they unfortunately become big targets for the illegal pet trade. In places like China and even the U.S., wealthy people are driving up the demand for these little marmosets. Trying to obtain these animals is highly illegal and also very dangerous for the marmoset itself, as they can often suffer or die when they take their parents, when they're taken from their parents, or transported. How they are looking to solve it is by implementing an education program directed towards children of the communities that live close to the pygmy marmosets and also those who live in urban areas. Also, they are trying to inform people by writing articles about these primates, presenting videos to audiences of nature festivals, seminars, and congresses. Wow, so it definitely looks like we're doing a lot to help preserve these animals, but there's also some cool ways that they've adapted to humans moving into their space. For example, they've had to change their communication methods. In places where there's a lot of human activity, they have to change the way that they communicate in order to compete with other noises in order for their calls to be heard. Which brings us to one of the most interesting facts about pygmy marmosets, it's vocal communication. These animals are striking because they are one of the few mammals, other than the humans, being known to babble as infants prior to acquiring proper communication skills. An infant pygmy marmoset will try to reproduce the sounds it hears, just like a human baby. And when an infant pygmy marmoset makes a correct vocalization, its parents will respond by making a similar vocalization in order to reinforce this behavior, just like we would do with human babies. That's pretty cool for the world's smallest monkey. Right? 
Well, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Man Who Is the Primate Guy. Join us again next week for our next primate. Property of matter. Bill, 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 bill. bill.